Hi, I am John Lira, and I'm going to show you a very useful technique that allows you to pass data or exchange information between a mapping and a workflow. I also ask you to please subscribe to my channel, youtube.com slash data you trust. Let us begin. Very useful technique, and I'll show you why it is. Here's a mapping, a very simple mapping. I'm going to read source data and I'm going to store it to a target. Now, this is the business scenario. I want to add a filter and for whatever reason, what I want is only, only when a certain flag, in this case dollar dollar payment flag, is greater than two. So whenever that flag is zero, do not store data in the target. When it is one, nope. When it is two, no. Only when it is greater than two, which means anything greater than or equal to three. So how do I do this? Well, first I'm going to go to my mapping and here I'm going to create a variable. Since I want this to be changeable, I'm going to define it as a variable and not as a parameter. So my variable name will be dollar dollar payment flag. It is integer and it is initially set to zero. Notice that the filter says when that value is greater than two. So the question is how am I, how am I going to increment that variable at the workflow level and send that data back here? That is the objective. So there goes my mapping and here goes my workflow. Very simple workflow. A session and notice the session is very straightforward. I have a source, I have a target, and I have the filter. So that's what I want to run. And when it runs, I want to have it store the data. And remember, it's only going to do it when that mapping variable is greater than two. So what do I want to do? Well, first of all, notice that here I have under session, I have something called view persistent values. Notice there's no mapping variable shown here because I have not, never run it. Also on the left hand side, when you see workflows, you can look at persistent values of the workflow. Ah, notice this says dollar dollar payment workflow var is four. Let me reset it. So what am I going to do? So I'm going to go to workflows. I'm going to edit and I'm going to create a variable. That variable is dollar dollar payment workflow var. Don't get this confused with the mapping variable that it's payment flag. This one is a variable in the workflow. Payment workflow var. It is integer. It is persistent and it is set to zero. So if we look at the value right now, it should be, it should be nothing because it hasn't run. And so what I'm going to do is make sure I save this and I'm going to run this. So this is the first time I'm running and I'm going to go to the monitor and let me just minimize a few of these sessions that I have run before so you can focus on the top one. Notice right here, if I double click on it, five source rows are being read, but no rows, zero rows are being written out. Why? Because remember, we have to have the flag set to greater than two so that it actually executes the mapping correctly. So remember the filter only when that property is greater than two. So the first time obviously it isn't and we'll confirm that in a moment. So now that it ran, let's look at the session persistent values. It is the payment flag is set to two and that's the workflow variable. And if we look at the left hand side, excuse me, that is the mapping variable. And if we look at the left hand side, we're going to look at the workflow variable, dollar dollar payment workflow var, it is set to one. How did it increment by one? Well, that is the reason I have the assignment statement. The assignment statement is taking the workflow variable, payment workflow var, and it's going to increment it by one. So that's how that's getting incremented. What I want to do is pass this over to the mapping variable. So when the filter encounters that, if it is greater than two, it will run it. So how do I do that? Let me run this one more time to prove to you that still no records 
have been written. Here is the mapping. Five records read, zero written, and we'll do it again. This time we'll inspect the persistent values. Notice dollar dollar payment flag is zero, and the workflow variable is two now. If we run it again, okay, and I'm going to run it again, and I'm, that's the fourth time, and I'm going to run it right now again. So the question you should have is, well, I've run it four or five times. Why isn't it not running correctly? Let's check to see the persistent values. It is set to zero, and the workflow variables, it is set to four. So should it not have already written those rows out? Let's check the monitor. Let's check the monitor. And let me just look at this. Here is the, I'll look at it. Notice five rows in, zero rows out. So something is wrong. Ah, what is wrong is that the variable defined in the workflow is not being sent back to the mapping. The mapping is looking for a mapping variable called dollar dollar payment flag. So how do we set that? How do we have a workflow and a mapping exchange data? Let me go back to the workflow. Very simple. Go back to your session under components. And this is the secret. Under pre-session variable assignment, we're going to make the assignment. On the left-hand side is the mapping variable that was defined in the mapping, which is dollar dollar payment flag. And it is equal to what? It is equal, you guessed it, to the variable for the workflow. So remember, payment workflow var is the one that's being incremented, but we're not sending it back to the mapping. Therefore, it's not executing correctly. So now that I've done that assignment, I click save, and I got to save this. And now I am going to run this, start workflow. If I go to the monitor, it runs. It just finished running, and I double-click on it, and I see that five rows were read and five rows were written out. So before, it was not doing that, and, be and that was because I was not sending the workflow variable back to the mapping variable. As soon as I made this change here on the assignment, then it did, and we can confirm that right now. Because now, if I looked at the session persistent values, notice that the mapping variable is 4. So it is greater than 2. So anything greater than 2, 3 or 4, would have made the filter execute. And if I look at the workflow variables, it is set to 5. So that concludes this demo. But let me just repeat and show you how you actually can reset these values. Session reset and workflow persistent values reset and now we could go ahead and try this from scratch and upon the third try it would then go ahead and store the data again so that is a very useful technique available since 8.6 but recently i found out that a huge customer was not aware of doing this so thank you very much john lira and subscribe to my youtube channel at data you trust. Thank you.